Dear students, today we will discuss about components, the software components. So why we need them? We have discussed some time ago that we need, we should build off the shelf building blocks from which large software can be constructed. And such a modular approach can be adopted and those modules can be used whenever required. But in reality, the imperative paradigm, the modular approach only promises uh, the development of such components. Actually, today we build such components of the shelf softwares using object oriented paradigm that there is an object and that object contains all of the information that is required as we can see the objects in the real life. So, for example, a human is an object and that human have all of the functionalities of seeing, of talking, of hearing. So, all of the functionalities are built in in that particular object. And then that object can be used, can be called, can be utilized in any other environment wherever required as a component. So, there are number of prefabricated templates in this scenario uh, to realize the concept of components. For example, C++ has standard template library. Java has Java application programmer interface, APIs available. c -sharp programmer have access to .NET framework class library. So, those have many, many components which can be utilized and after utilizing, you can build the software very quickly. So, components are not just objects. They are reusable units of software. In practice, most components are based on the object-oriented paradigm and take the form of a collection of one or more objects that function as a self-contained unit. And the component architecture, also known as component-based software engineering, in which the traditional role of a programmer has been replaced by component assembler. Because you have all of the components available and you just need to plug and play those components. You need to arrange those components. You need to just assemble those components to form a new software product, whatever you want. So, let's have an example. In development interfaces, icons are displayed. So, in next semesters, you will be building different kind of softwares using different kind of software development kits. And there you can, you will experience. However, in this first course of introduction to computing, this is one of the things which I think you might have used the paint, a Microsoft paint. And this paint have certain components. For example, this component is a rubber component. So, whatever you want to remove from the screen, you can use or call this component to remove. Similarly, this is brush and for example, if you want to write anything, you need to click this component, etc. If you want to draw different uh, shapes, you can use all of these components. So, using these components, you can build a really very good interface, uh, whatever you want, or really very good object in this graphics domain. So, the methodology of component assembler is to select the pertinent components from collections of predefined components and then connect them with minimal customization to obtain the desired functionality. So, there are some more examples as well. For example, Facebook, when executed on a smartphone, may use the component of the contact application of your phone to add all Facebook friends as your contacts. Similarly, the telephone application may also access the contacts components to look up that what is the name of the caller. So, when you receive the call, so that application is invoked and that application goes into the contact area of your phone and try to get that what name you have saved against the number for from which you have received the call and that name is displayed. So, this is another component which is used by the telephone application. So, if we summarize 
uh, today's module. We have learned about components. We have talked that why we need it, what are prefabricated templates available in different programming languages, what is the component architecture, and we have also discussed the examples.